in Jamaica, the hangover remedy was, was herbal tea. And if you're like, oh yeah, my grandmother used to drink herbal tea, it's different. It's different, unless your grandmother was also your fucking weed dealer, because <laughs> this was marijuana, this was ganja tea. Now we go down, we're in the town on the grill, we go to a place called Ted's Tea Shack, which is also Ted's house. And we, <laughs> well, we go inside and on his stove, he's got a pot with a heaping amount of marijuana in it, a giant amount of marijuana in it, simmering in a small amount of water. And when it's done steeping, he brings it outside and he strains it into two teacups through an old t-shirt. And he filled his cup a little bit and he filled my cup all the way to the top. And then he drank his and then I drank mine. And then Ted was like, oh man, you drank the whole thing. <laughs> what? Yeah, Ted. Yeah, you poured that for you and you drank that, and then you poured this for me and I drank that. Why, I wasn't supposed to? No, man. <laughs> I poured a little bit for me, because this is all I can handle, and I poured a lot for you to share with everybody. That's a lot of tea, man. <laughs> Ted. <laughs> Ted. Yeah. What's gonna happen to me? Man, I don't know. <laughs> but it could be trouble. I think it's gonna feel like you got hit by a freight train. Ted, what? Whoa, man hit by a freight train? Why don't you use an analogy that you can relate to? Why don't you tell me it'll feel like I got hit by a bobsled? <laughs> 15 minutes later and it hit me, but it wasn't what he made it out to be. I just got hit with this wave of relaxation. I just felt like this warmth wash over me. I felt good. I felt great. I felt present. I felt alert. I felt relaxed. I was like, Ted, man, if I, I, why'd you scare me? If you had more of this tea, I would drink it right now. I like the way that this feels. He's like, man, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. It's not going to hit you for another 45 minutes, man. <laughs> so 45 minutes later, I lost the use of my legs. <laughs> That's true. I, yeah, I was stuck in my chair. I had to be carried by the crew to the crew van. This is how they walk, don't make fun of them. Put in the van, double seat belted in so I didn't fall over on the turns. Driven to the hotel, we got to the hotel, be carried to the hotel through the hotel lobby. He's a and brought to my room and laid down on my bed, which is where they left me. And I'm laying there, staring up at the ceiling, and when I could finally move my legs again, I was too afraid to get out of bed because the towel hanging on the doorknob looked like a baby ghost. Oh. Mm. Oh. Edibles may cause paranoia. <laughs> like, look, I, I smoked pot before. I never felt anything like this. Maybe Ted gave me something stronger. Maybe he gave me something different. Maybe he's on his way to my hotel room right now to harvest my organs. <laughs> when he gets here, should I tell him that my liver is probably not an organ that he wants from me? <laughs> Take my spleen, Ted. I haven't even used it. I don't even know where it is. <laughs> I've never been to space before. I haven't. Maybe the earth is flat. I don't know. This is the shit you think about when you're stoned. <laughs> All I did know is that I still had another scene to shoot that day. <laughs> so the phone rings, it's Christina, the, the producer. And she's like, hey, you ready to go? I'm like, no. <laughs> 
Christina, you told me I had two hours of downtime. And she's like, I know, I know. We went and had lunch and we shot some other stuff. It's been five hours. <laughs> Edibles may cause time travel. I was like, no, Christina, I can't. I can't do this. I, I'm still stoned from Ted's T-Shack and I don't think I can do it. I don't think you want me to do it. I don't even think I can carry on a coherent conversation. And she's like, you're having a coherent conversation of how you can't have a coherent conversation. <laughs> it's like, well played. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll, I'll pull my shit together. I'll come down. I'll be downstairs in five minutes. And she's like, no, no, no. I'm just kidding. You sound high as shit. You shouldn't be around people. No, no, no. Stay away. Stay away from contact. She's like, maybe just, you know, like, enjoy being stoned. Look, we're done. The episode is wrapped. Maybe just go enjoy being stoned. Go for a walk on the beach. Go for a swim in the ocean. I was like, yeah, and fall off the planet? Fuck you, Christina. God damn it. Everyone in Jamaica is out to get me. That's the plan. So, went to sleep that night at 7 p.m., woke up the next morning at 9 a.m. I slept for 14 hours. I felt amazing. I get myself to the airport, get on the flight, take off, and the lady next to me sees I'm traveling by myself. And she's like, so she's like, what were you doing in Jamaica? I was like, oh, I was doing a show called Three Sheets. I went to Ted's Tea Shack. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> I went to Appleton Estates. I had jerk chicken. I did an episode in Costa Rica and Ireland and Wales and France. Oh, I start telling her all these stories about all the trips I had. And at some point, the flight attendant comes over and says, sir, you need to put your seat up. I was like, oh, wow. I didn't realize we were changing planes in Miami. She's like, no, we're landing in Los Angeles. It's been six and a half hours that I've been talking to this lady nonstop. <laughs> nonstop. <laughs> I'm afraid I've literally bored her to death. I don't want to look at her. I'm afraid she's turned into one of those skeletons from Indiana Jones, just a skull with hair on it. So I turn, I don't even know what I'm gonna say, but I turn to apologize and there's nobody there. And a flood attendant told me that there never was. So from now on, fly stone. That's all I can tell you.